Jane Esselstyn. I'm Ann Esselstyn. And it is almost Thanksgiving. And mashed potato day. Woohoo! Yes, and we, my mom is the master of mashed potatoes. Um, oh my gosh, I don't have the right page yet. Um, but she is going to take it away. So, I've got about six. Yukon Gold are the best mashed potatoes because the skin is thin. Pardon so me, I found the page. If you're with us, it's on page 138 in the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. Does that say mashed potatoes? Oh, yeah. It says good garlicky All mashed right. potatoes. Good. And I am going to cut these potatoes in small pieces. And the reason is that it, Jane, would you help, please? Yeah. Because it, it gets it to, to cook faster. And the coolest thing about cooking, boiling mashed potatoes is that you, I spilled, <laughs> I dropped one, is you've got to start them in, the, in not in boiling water. Because if you start them in boiling water, they cook from the outside. The, the outside gets cooked first, so they're not all the way through evenly. So start them in. So the outside gets a little fuzzy? I've yeah. done that, I've done that. So the outside's kind of fuzzy and yeah. inside's firm. And so the smaller pieces, the quicker they'll cook. And I would say it takes, oh, maybe 20 minutes. I keep tasting the potatoes as I go along to see. If, I mean, they just have to be soft enough so that when you So our recipe says it mash starts, them, you start mash. with six medium mashed potatoes, but we probably end with five and a third potatoes with our recipe because she tastes so many from the pot as they're yeah. cooking. Well, yes. so yeah. I am going to put all these potatoes into the pot and there's water in here and I want to have them covered so that they all get cooked but you don't need tons. We got probably more water in here than I'm going to dump a little water out. All right. And here they go on the stove maybe somewhere between 17 and 20 minutes, but taste them at 15 to see what's happening. Yours may you be cut covered? smaller. Cover them, yeah. And while we're waiting for them to boil, what will we do, Jane? Well, I think we should do some pull-ups, some push-ups, or some jumping jacks. Oh, we'll do, Just we'll do against some push-ups the, push against the counter. We're in this nice pasta pot, so I can just, Ooh. over here where you can't see, I'm draining them, and then I am going to put them into my big bowl. Jane has a nice glass bowl. There they go. And then comes the fun. But this is the problem, Jane. Yes. I like to get leverage, so when I mash from here, oh. I don't get the nice leverage I like, so it's really good. Thank you. The purple stool. Go and go. And now you see I can really mash these potatoes nicely. <laughs> and All right, while she's mashing her potatoes. Jane, while you're mashing, would you get a couple of cloves of garlic? And oh. I have a garlic press. Oh. When I put them in, I like to have it them in the How press. How many cloves do you like? One or two, depending on your taste. And when, if you put it in hot, it kind of is nice. Yeah, it cooks now, in. It's, oh. I am going to add some almond milk. This is the 365 unsweetened almond. Or you can use the Pacific. Or uh, soy milk would be great. Oh, there's a new kind of... of oh, is it almond milk? It's the almond, milk. it's called Oatly. And it's only the white container. But that, again, I, I think oats have, are a little sweet, so I think oat milk is not always the best choice Yeah, I think it, takes, it makes it taste a little bit vanilla-y. It tastes a little sweet. All right, I put so, two in and they were regular size. Do you want more or are you good? Two is good. Say those are for something else. Okay. Um, all right, this looking pretty nice, but now, now comes... Stand up, you look... How, what? Wait. Well, I don't... I, I'm afraid I'm too tall when I'm on the top of the stool. But now yeah. comes the, the, the trick. And that is, per potato, I'm going to put in one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. So I have six potatoes here. 
Ish. So I am going to put... She tasted a lot of them. No, I only tasted one. And now I've lost how many? <laughs> but I think that's six. If it's too much, it's, not, it's fine. Now, the thing about nutritional yeast is that it kind of makes the potatoes dry. Jane, we need pepper. Black pepper. Black pepper. Three, five, ho, oh, And again, pepper is a little individual. I love individual, my pepper grinder. But, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to add more. Yeah, they're black peppers. At one point, I put in multicolored peppers in here, the like pink and white and stuff, but these are, these are black. We've ground through all And that. you know, if you feel that you've gotten your potatoes too wet, you'll be surprised. They, 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 they sort of stiffen up. So you can, and if they do stiffen up, just add any, other, any liquid, anything. Sometimes, if I don't have an alternative milk, I just use the potato water. Jane's always how, a little hard. How much do you want? How much do you want? I the water just for some reason. I put in a half a teaspoon, or so that's going to be about I don't know. We'll think four or five grinds. Okay. And also in the recipe we have a, a one teaspoon of dried rosemary. So I'm going to find that. Oh, another a really important trick: don't try and make your mashed potatoes in a blender because they it turns to oh. glue. So you really Crazy. need to, to do this. And if you don't have a masher like I do, you could use a fork. I mean, you could use your hands. Um, I've never Some tried my them. hands. No, the ricer? Some people have the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The people love the potato ricers. I've tried it. But I just like the simplicity of this. All right, one teaspoon of Ooh. crushed rosemary. And, and I like your crushed rosemary. Then you don't get the big twigs in your, in your teeth. Too. So here we are with our mashed potatoes, and oh, there is nothing as good as these mashed potatoes with our mushroom gravy. And we did do a... Yeah, I think we have a video on that. Um, we'll uh, maybe post a link to that um, so you can pair them up because tasting these alone sometimes, I'm like, ah, oh, these are a little... Uh... And Mom says, Jane, stop. We always have this with... And cranberry our mushroom gravy and our cranberry, which was our previous video, I believe. And um, this is really just the centerpiece of our Thanksgiving along with our stuffing. So there are 42 of us for Thanksgiving and we're making mashed potatoes and mushroom gravy. And I'm sort of tempted, to, I think maybe, would these last till Thanksgiving? I could sort of maybe Put add these to because we're going to need an You're awful lot. We're going to eat them all. We're going to eat them all. We're going to eat, eat, eat them all. Of mashed right. potatoes. Oh, yeah, here. Mm. Okay. Well, hope you would have. Oh, I just put a big pepper thing there. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> well, I ho hope you have wonderful mashed I potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. At your Thanksgiving table oh, as well. I forgot, Jane. One what? thing. Well, it's absolutely so much fun. Is if you have any leftover mashed potatoes, add some some um, flaxseed meal. And mix it up and make oh. them into little potato pancakes. Yes. Put them in a nonstick pan. That is probably helpful. And then don't turn them over until they've been a long time cooking because they'll sort of coagulate. But they're beautiful. And you can eat them with salsa or just plain. But that's really fun. In fact, that's almost worth it to make a whole thing of mashed potatoes. To Coagulate is not really a delicious word to use about food, but oh. it, yeah, they do. They they get they get so nice and um, perfect perfect pancake like. Have a great Thanksgiving. Fill it with mashed potatoes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. And I'm Ann Esselstyn. And she's the mommy in the mommy's mushroom gravy recipe we're doing today. Um, in honor of Thanksgiving approaching, it is called Mommy's Mushroom Gravy 2.0. It's 2.0 because the first time we used this recipe in uh, Plant Strong with my brother Rip, we loved it. But when we were making it for heart disease patients, we really wanted to make the sodium level be as low as possible, but still have this great flavor and carry that sort of umami, yummy, mommy mushroom gravy flavor. So we absolutely have the tamari, and we have the um, miso. miso, and it's delicious. And the great thing is, you can, uh, when you buy miso, buy the lowest sodium one you can find. And there's one out there that is t absolutely so excellent, and I've forgotten the name of it. 
but um, it, it, you can get quite a bit of a variety in miso, but to just look for the ones. You mean variety of sodium levels? So, sodium levels. We we um, go with white, or like sometimes it's called mellow, and it tends to be not as uh, intense. And I don't know about the sodium level. I'm not going to. It's 210. There you go. Okay. Well, the way to start my mommy's mushroom gravy is by sauteing an onion, and we've done that a million times with you, so we're just going to throw my throat on there. Great. Um, and oh, we can use this. Uh, saute the onion, and with the onion, we're going to have some garlic, and there's a couple of cloves. And what's so, what's so cool about this recipe is that you have a ton of mushrooms when you begin it, and you think, oh gosh. This is so filled with mushrooms. This is this is not going to cook down to be uh, gravy. It cooks down and it gives this great flavor. And to be honest, this is the this is the first dish that disappears on our uh, Thanksgiving buffet. We have everybody in the family bring a dish. I mean, everybody. I mean, some kids are bringing, you know, a, a stack of apples, but <laughs> everyone brings something to Thanksgiving. And guess what my mom always makes? Mommy's mushroom gravy. Times what, like three or four? You, you yeah. triple it. It has pepper. It has that salt, that umami. Oh, I can hear it sizzling right now. Um, so let's get, the, let's get the mushrooms in and get it cooked down. This will take a few minutes, so we might just speed it up for you um, for a second here. All right, back in the flash. OK, that's cooking down kind of nicely. I'm going to add one cup of broth. Uh, to the vegetables and have them cook. And my mom's going to make a little bit of the mixture here. Here, you can add a cup here to your bowl. Um, for the potent flavor. With one cup of meat, one cup of broth. And then some miso. Whoops. Splash. Mix that nut in. Some... This is some flour. I'm going to put the tamari in over here. Tamari is going in with the vegetables. Why not in here? You want it in there? Yeah. OK, you go in there. It's kind of nice to have everything liquid in here. All right. And, and the, the thing about it is liquid. that it's good to get to, if you don't do this first with the flour and the liquid, then the flour can get lumpy when you stick it in the gravy. And you want nice, smooth gravy. Only half the time I remember to do that, and I somehow muscle my way through the clumps that I get out there. There are a lot of clumps in this one. Well, I think that's the miso clumps. Oh. So are we ready to have this No, no, in? no. You, I, I've got to cook this down a little while and you want to stir that, so we'll be another few minutes. Okay, the mushrooms are now ready to have the, the miso and tamari mixture. And which is nice to do it as liquid, but as Jane said, you can always add it at the last minute. Or we can, or I just cook it all in yeah. together without making it liquid first. And this is a little bit of cooking sherry. Uh, oh, look at that go. Woo! Side side. Well, look at that. And the sherry. Here. Thank you. Okay, now this is just going to cook down until it's the te texture of gravy that you want. It, um, it thickens up sort of as long as you want to leave it cooking. A little bit of sherry, Marseille, something like that, adds just a special flavor. All the alcohol cooks off. And, but it is optional. Um, you don't have to use it's it. It's totally but, optional. Yeah. But I, I always find when I add it, it's a little better tasting. Well, I think it's probably reminiscent to real gravy that you grew up with. No, it, it just has that some kind of a little... Sophisticated flavor. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. All right, we're just going to cook down a little longer. We'll be right back. This is looking so good now. Love adding the crazy black pepper. C5 faux foam. Is there enough in there? I can never tell. All right, this is looking like gravy. This is looking like gravy. Woo! Um, oh, it's so delicious. So delicious. And I, uh, let's go, let's go low. Got it? Ooh, hot. Okay, this. This is ambrosia. It, yeah. I would, it's I, wonderful on anything. 
on baked potatoes, on spinach. Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. With oh. stuffing. Um, that with sweet potato. Picture there. Oh, yes. Makes this me is... drool every time I see it. Now, we, we truly do eat this um, with like roasted new potatoes, mashed potatoes, whole potatoes. When we have a. We went to a conference one time, do you remember? And they had a big, huge bin of this on top of uh, little baked potatoes, and it was just such a hit. I, well, it, it is such a hit, and again, it's the first thing on our Thanksgiving buffet to be just gone, empty. Okay, so uh, it's a little too hot to taste right now, but we're going to eat every single drop of this, I guarantee. All right, so go make your mommy's mushroom gravy. Good luck with it. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Jane Esselstyn. I'm Ann Esselstyn. And as it's getting close to the time of Thanksgiving and families getting together and having to stuff themselves with stuffing, today we're going to make stuffing, Thanksgiving stuffing. The name of ours is Brian Stuffing because my husband Brian is clearly like the best cook in the family. And let me tell you that this is such good stuffing and I love it so much that my Christmas present every year from Brian is stuffing. A tray of stuffing wrapped in a bow. <laughs> and we have it Christmas uh, lunch or, or dinner usually. It's just delightful. If you're following along, we're on page 136 and what's so exciting is that we stuff a pumpkin with stuffing so the essence of the pumpkin can get drizzled or get baked or cooked and, into and, it. And what it does is that when you put it, when you put it out at Thanksgiving, it just makes it, it looks, so important. I mean, it's much better than a turkey. Get a big, if you have a big oven, get a big pumpkin. Just save it after Halloween and carve it open, stuff it. All the extra stuffing we're going to put in a tray. So we're going to start. We start with onions. We're going to throw those in there. And you're going to cook them down. And onions are, get cooked in with a bunch of celery, which we know tastes so good, um, and all the stuffing. And we also, of course, put kale in our stuffing. And I make sure we put these all in the right order that we have here. And then we put in carrots. All the things take a little longer to cook. Actually, you could put in kale probably a little. You could put in kale later. Yeah. Um, kale will cook down, no problem. And then a ton of mushrooms. We love the mushrooms. Oh! Look at that. This is a load. Lovely. Um, so this is going to cook down for a while. And once all of the vegetables that are cooked down get warmed up, um, we're going to move on to mixing it here in this bowl. And in this bowl right here, what I have is about 15 pieces of bread that we have chopped up and toasted. So look, they're all just crispy and dry, like a stuffing. And oh, <laughs> so some of the breads I've used are the whole rye bread that is available all over the place at Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Heinen's. Heinen's is near us. Um, I used a bunch of this, which is, which is uh, food for life, Genesis 129 sprouted grain and seed bread. And there's another rye bread in here from, it has poppy seeds on it from, where's that, where's the black bread from? Whole Foods. Oh, she gets it's, it at Whole Foods. It's called black Russian rye, black, Russian rye. I mean, yeah. A black bread covered in poppy seeds from Whole Foods. So that's what's in here. And once it's this is black Russian, that's what it's called. Black Russian. Okay. Once this is cooked down in a few minutes, we'll come right back and show how we mix it all together and then stuff things. Okay. Be right back. It's ready to Gorgeous. mix everything up now. It's Look at that. It kind of went down in about half, would yeah, you say? It, it shrinks down so much because there's so much water in it. And also because there's so much water in it, it doesn't stick to the bottom. You see the bottom of the pan is clean. It's not, everyone thinks they have to spray and oil their pans. You don't. Okay, so now we're gonna combine the cooked vegetables with the, um, with the dried bread. Did you tell them how much you did to dry the bread? Oh, I just put it in the oven and let it, uh, it's 
dry, you know, until your bread has different kinds of moisture content. So until your bread is crispy, everyone knows what crisp bread's like. Uh, and then I put it in a bag overnight, and so I'd have it ready for today. Okay, so we're gonna stir this in with the spices, and the spices I have we have here are of course sage, which is such the the, the quintessential sort of um, smell and spice of stuffing. And we have some oregano, garlic powder, some rosemary. We're gonna add in water chestnuts, and we're gonna add Ready in. Ready for them? Sure. And we're gonna add in Whole cranberries. Container. Yes, and we're also. Look at these gorgeous cranberries. Oh. They do look beautiful. They're just so beautiful. We have saved a few on the side for the top for garnish at the end. No, no, let's save them for the, at the end when we're going to garnish um, before serving. And <laughs> there's, in the recipe, we use two apples and a pear. But believe it or not, the pears right now are like stones. I thought they were quinces. They were so hard um, when I felt them. And... If anybody knows what a quince is, what is a quince? A fruit? It's a. It's an odd. Sounds very like old British. So apples go in, and if you have a pear, put that in there. We don't, so we're just skipping it. And now you have this great mixture of the crispy bread, then the moist vegetables, and we add broth to make it all be just mushy, mushy, mushy. Yours is open, I think. I'm gonna pour yours in. Oh, and some black pepper. I love the high drama of the big black pepper grinder. No idea how much I just put in there, ha. All right, let's pour that in. And it's about four to six cups, uh, depending on how, how, again, how moist the bread is and how much you need. You so put there's the whole four, container? Yeah, this is four, cu four cups per container of this size. And, um, this yeah. is engine two of vegetable broth. Yeah, 32 it's ounces. Got no That's... salt in it. It's hard to find that. Engine two or the salt? It's veggie stocks without sodium. Added. Yeah. Some vegetables have sodium in Like celery has a lot. A lot of, so you look at a no, no salt added broth and it will actually have sodium in the, in the, uh, nutritional information. That's just from the vegetables. Okay, so we're going to keep stirring this like mad. We usually... My mouth is already watering thinking about the stuffing. Thinking about Thanksgiving and Christmas when Ryan would bring one to you. <laughs> um, all right, so sometimes to this beautiful recipe, people add... You want to toss that around for a minute? Yeah. Um, people add a little tawny port. And I don't even know what accent to use with that. We did a tawny port, I suppose. British or Scottish, it's a tawny port. Any of the alcohol cooks right off, but it leaves such a delicious flavor. So we're going to put in half a cup of tawny port, and we're going to call this a half cup. Is that right, half cup, you think? I don't know. It smells like tawny port. All right, we're going to call that a half cup. Okay, do we need a little more? A little more? Guess what? It's going to make me sneeze. Sneeze, me too. The pepper, <laughs> the pepper. <laughs> I have an itchy nose too. I was going to step away. <laughs> I was just going to sneeze right into the... <laughs> they say those, those, of, those of us who were born um, and run around barefoot and had lots of family members sneezing on us, we have a stronger <laughs> immune system. Maybe that's why I have a strong immune system. She sneezes on all of our food. No, I don't. Uh, really? Are you going to put more? I'll leave it just because I think it needs to be a little squishier. We can ask Brian. He's the pro. He's here today. Sorry. Brian, will you assess how moist this is? This is how much, how moist you like it when you make it? Yeah, it's always going to dry out. So. It's always going to dry out. So is that so look if like you it's get, good if enough? It gets... I mean, it's just four to six cups, so we're going to use the, you're the pro. What do you think? This is, so this, I would is go, mushy enough? I guess, according to Brian, I would go to the six cups. Okay, so we're going to go a little more to uh, about half of this? No. Stop. Dry stuffing is awful. Stop. Okay. Okay, this is looking very nice and moist. So let's put some of that, let's fill our, let's fill our pumpkin. Whew. So cool. Here. 
here. It's going to help you, but you're doing fine. And you know what's so cute is when you put the pumpkin in the oven to cook, you put a little cap. You put it like a little Tin Man cap of of, of tin foil on top of this, so it doesn't burn. So it has a little tin cap. Okay, look at that. There we go. And I'm going to put a little tin foil nose on top of that one. There you go. Oh! All right, spread that around. That gets this. That'll go on there. And then little we look at that protector. It's like a little bit of sunscreen on top of that. Okay, let's load it in the oven now. This is going to go in the oven so it's going to be able to fit right in. I'm going to go on the side over here with this one so it'll bake. And hopefully this one also fits in. And that in. Perfect. There we go. Can bake all day at, oh, what's it bake at? Oh, I should know. 350, 350. and it's going to go for 45 minutes or an hour until it dries out, um, or just not dries out, until it gets that uh, nice, moist... Mm, um, that's Brian stuffing. Yeah, it's just, it's like bread pudding-y, or I don't even know what bread pudding is. No. All right, we'll be back it's in a like minute. stuffing. We'll be back in, in, in an hour, actually. Okay. Bye. No, not bye. Oh. Tem temporary goodbye. The, the stuffing the is almost stuffing. done, and oh, the pumpkin. Yes. Okay. Oh, it looks beautiful. Look you, at the little the... pumpkin cap. It's the cutest thing. It's the cutest thing. Oh. Look at that. Is it, is it too hot? You know, I think we should have probably put that pumpkin in a dish because it made a little mess on the bottom. Oh, but you know what? Look at how adorable this is. And it didn't get sunburned on top. Look at that. It's adorable. Everyone's going to want to come up to this dish and say, oh, give me some of that. Look at that. Oh, yum. And then this. What's, how's this look? Ooh. Oh, wow. Thanksgiving stuffing. Oh. All right. This and is, with mushroom gravy on it. And my mashed potatoes on the side. We have to do mashed potatoes soon. Yes. Oh, okay. Well... This is going to be, this is going to be dinner tonight. Lunch tomorrow. Dinner <laughs> tomorrow. All right. Ha have a good Thanksgiving, and we hope you guys have plant-strong stuffing on your table. Plant-based stuffing. Plant-perfect stuffing. Whatever you want to call it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Jane. I'm Anne. And we're continuing with the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. And today we're making cranberry salsa. I know it might not be cranberry season or like a Thanksgiving oh, type. I love cranberry salsa anytime. That's why we're doing anything. it now. Like, I don't know when we're going to post this, but we're, we love cranberries. And you can buy them frozen, you can buy them fresh. And they this uh, recipe works every time. Um, I just... I came upon it at a Christmas party that an Australian friend of mine was hosting and I thought how funny that this person who lives where cranberries don't grow down under um, has this wonderful recipe. Anyway, it's in our Prevent and Heart Disease Cookbook and it's on page 121 if you're following along and it is um, well, put, this, put, oh, for, put, put this on just plain rice if your rice is feeling bare it's wonderful on rice and beans. If you have, you know, Jane oh, you does like the potato sand. bar. It's a little scallions go into this. Um, we have to have oh, half. I have to do half that. of a um, half a jalapeno pepper, and it, it sounds like it makes it hot, and it doesn't. It kind of makes it balances out the tart and the sweet and the maple syrup. Um, and I'm actually I need I need the uh, maple syrup lime press because it takes one lime juice and I love my lime citrus you like a reamer I like the press and this just gets it all in there and you have half of that ready to go oh you do awesome let me move the maple syrup thing here you like to make maple syrup bowls um throw that in thank you and uh, then we're just gonna whisk this up 
this also calls for cilantro. If you know you're not going to offend any people who would have loved your cranberry salsa with flavor of cilantro. I prefer this coarsely chopped. And when the when But the, even if you blow it and don't cook it, don't do it coarsely, it's still delicious. Oh, it, it, it's like a relish then. Cranberry, cranberry relish. Um, and see so when it's frozen, <laughs> it looks that pinkish color and it it tastes like some sort of raspberry or sorbet. I like to taste it just right out of the All right, so this is kind of uh, I'm it's I'll a do little it one, coarse. It's a little coarse. I'll do it one or two more times, but I really, even really even like that, it would be love. Good. Yeah. Um, so here it is, and just for a quick idea of how you could have this, let's get that bowl. Let's get a bowl. Um, how you could serve this is um, have it with some crispy pita chips. We just did a post about crispy pita chips. And one of the things what, that this we is how do, I discovered it. At the every party. every Christmas, we have a Christmas carol party at our house with all our neighborhood, and Jane and I make our wonderful what do they call pepper ridge sandwiches, yeah. and we cut the crusts off the bread, and we toast them, and we put them in a bowl, and we have the they look like little little cigars, little toasty the cranberry cigars. salsas there, and I mean it isn't particularly pretty. But it is so delicious. No, the, the, the I mean, crusts are pretty. The crusts are pretty. pretty. But the cranberry, the cranberry. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, have a bite. Hey, cheers, happy holidays. Oh, hi. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait. Double dipping she is. I turned it around. Oh, cheers, mm -hmm. happy holidays. Or whatever holiday it is. This might be in April. All right. Go enjoy your cranberry salsa. Bye. Mm. Bye.